every set, we look at the 10 most unique new commander concepts available to us. These can be commanders, but they can also be new spells that bring a new style of play. Or that solidify a tribe or mechanic as a strong commander deck style. Let's look at the 10 new concepts from Murders at Karloff Manor. The last couple of years we've seen Wizards of the Coast making the white commander decks stronger. They used to miss an identity. That's why I think Delny Streetwise Lookout is a great example of a new playstyle fitting with the color's identity. Delny cares about creatures with power 2 or less, something white cares about because they're about protecting every small piece of their army. Your small powered creatures can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater, and more importantly, the abilities of your small creatures trigger twice. Assemble the players also plays into the two powered theme. It lets you look at the top of your library and play the small creatures. Wizards really want to push this mechanic and seems to really make a new theme happen. Golgari has been really pushing the theme of having creatures leave your graveyard. And Amzu Swarm's Hunger really pushes into this with for the first part giving insects menace, but for the second part saying that whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, you create a 1-1 and put plus 1 counters on it equal to the greatest mana value among the cards brought back. Insidious Roots also came out in the main set of Karloff Manor and it says creature tokens you control have tap to add 1 mana of any color, playing into the insect tokens and then whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, you create a plant creature token that can then also add extra mana but it also gets a plus one counter uh, every time that this triggers. Coveted Falcon is a really interesting gift giving card. It is a 1-4 with flying and it says that whenever it attacks, you gain control of one permanent you own but don't control, so you get to steal one of your gifts back. Then when Coveted Falcon is turned face up, so you disguise it first, then you turn it face up for two more mana, target, Opponent gains control of any number of target permanents you control. So for once, you can give a bunch of gifts to your opponents and you probably have a deck in your commander deck where you want to give those cards to your opponents. They are probably more of a curse than a gift. And then you draw a card for each permanent they gained control of this way. Then we have Massacre Girl, one of the fan favorites. This is the sort of playoff of the first Massacre Girl. The new one says, first of all, a 4-4 with Manus for 4 mana, but then creatures you control have Wither. So that means that your creatures deal damage to other creatures in the form of minus one counters, making them weaker and easier to beat. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies with Massacre Girl on the field, if its softness was less than one, draw a card. So if you kill a creature this way, you get to draw a card. But another one way to give your other creatures uh, minus one minus one is with the old Massacre Girl that says when, a, when she enters the battlefield each other creature gets minus one until end of turn and whenever a creature dies this turn each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one until end of turn. So with these two you get to easily draw cards for every creature that you board wipe this way. Then Illicit Masquerade, our first non-creature card that changes commander for us. It's a 4 mana enchantment with flash and when it ends the battlefield you put an imposter counter on each creature you control. Then whenever a creature you control with such an a counter on it dies, you exile it, you return up to one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So instead of going to the graveyard the creature does get exiled but you also do get to get another creature back. This is a sort of board wide protection card that is really able to swing the game in your favor so that is one thing that you can do but another thing you can do of course is switch the counters around so we get way more ways to do that in commander nowadays so do with it what you will then we have a bit of a weird one with persuasive interrogators six mana for five six and it isn't uncommon but i really like to showcase these ones as well when they enter the battlefield, you investigate, so you get to make a clue token. You can sacrifice it for two mana to draw a card. 
Clue tokens aren't new, but this one also says whenever you sacrifice a clue, target opponent gets two poison counters. So in a way, if you can, for really cheap, uh, sacrifice a bunch of clues in your clue deck, I hope, you get to kill many opponents really quickly. Because a player with 10 or more poison counters loses the game. So if you sacrifice five clues, you get to kill someone outright. I think this is a sort of game winning piece. It's a little bit expensive, but you do get to win the game in a pretty cool way. Back to commanders. Yara's Roar of the Old Gods is a legendary creature, of course. And then a 4-4 for 4. So that's already strong, but other creatures you control also gain haste. Something you really want to have a lot of in your deck. Then it's a sort of commander for face down creatures. Because whenever one or more face down creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Making the face down creatures themselves more viable. Then whenever a face down creature is uh, killed, you return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. If it's a permanent card, then turn it face up. So as long as it's a permanent, you get to face it up, which is what you wanted to do anyways. So you get to attack with all your face down creatures, your opponent get to block them, but they don't know what you get back for it. And otherwise they just return to the battlefield again and you have a probably a 2-2 that can deal combat damage to a player to have you draw more cards. So in this way, this green and red card really helps you stay in the game, even if you play creatures that are just 2-2s. Lost in the maze doesn't seem like it should do a lot. This is a an enchantment with flash, so a sort of instant speed enchantment, with two blue mana and an X for a cost. Then when it enters the battlefield, tap X target creatures. Put a stun counter on each of those creatures you don't control, so they don't get to uh, be untapped the next turn. And that's it for that part. But then tap creatures you control have hexproof. And I think that part is really strong. If you just play this for two mana uh, as a way to protect some of your creatures by giving them hexproof, I think this is really interesting. And I see this enchantment really doing well in decks that have creatures that tap a lot. So in a Timmy deck, you will really have a fun time with this card protecting your creatures. Judith, Carnage Connoisseur. It's a 5 mana 3-4 that lets you create 2-2s two whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. But the most important part about this card is that she gives your spells Death Touch and Lifelink. But the Death Touch part is really interesting because if you can deal 1 damage to a bunch of creatures from your, on your opponent's side, you get to kill them all because your spells will kill any creature that they deal damage to. So in this way you get to have a lot of cheap ways to kill a bunch of creatures and have your own red imps probably be the only creatures surviving. And the last one is audience with Trostani, a 3 mana sorcery that says create a 0-1 green plant creature token, not the strongest effect yet, but then draw cards equal to the number of differently named creature tokens you control. And this effect has been gaining traction a little bit with the previous commander decks, uh, pre-cons that have been coming out. But creating a deck with a bunch of different types of tokens is really interesting to me because you get a really diverse uh, deck. This means that you do have a uh, need to have differently named creature tokens. So two cats that are either a 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two don't count. You really need a diverse, a biodiverse board state in order to have this card become good. So this doesn't really solidify the theme yet, but it does push it in a cool direction. And I hope there will be more for this one. I hope you enjoyed watching as well. So have a nice day.